phone. But this next guy is a YouTube celebrity. Have you guys seen this video of the meteorologist with the cat? It's like 1.97 million views on YouTube. His childhood ambition was like many of ours, to be a meteorologist. How many of you dreamt of being a meteorologist when you were a young child? One person? Fantastic. Jörg, you have a friend. You got one other person who wanted to be a meteorologist. In order to avoid jail time with the Swiss Army, he decided to be the, uh, the weather soldier for the Swiss Army. He's an incredible man. He's super funny. He's absolutely fantastic. He's got a great story to share. Guys, can you please put your hands together and welcome Jörg Kahlmann. Have fun. Enjoy. Thanks, you all. Thanks for the honor of having me here. Great day, Kevin Spacey and other great people, entrepreneurs, the guy from YouPorn after me. So it's a great day. And I apologize for not having taken the lederhosen. I know, I know I should have. It's the shoes, it's the shirt, but 40 years ago, it would have been fine. You see, I, I looked okay or so. Now, it's when you watch the Discovery Channel and you see the horn of a dead rhino laying in the mud in the savannah for four days. That's how my legs look like. And you don't want to see that. You really don't want to see that. You would have, you would have looked onto my legs all the time, like when you are close to a traffic accident and you think, oh, no, no, no that's not right. And uh, so that's why have a great afternoon, everybody. I'm going to talk about the weather. And uh, it's my responsibility to do this. And I think I can. I think I can. I do. Fifteen years ago, we did fine. People thought, oh, they do a good job. The forecasts are much better than in the past. This is different right now. People don't believe us anymore too much. And you can see it in the web. I hate weather apps. Your weather app sucks. Why are forecasters often wrong? And you can even see it on Google Trend. Interest in weather forecasts hasn't changed a lot in the past. But if you type in accurate weather forecast, you see it's going up and up and up. And why? Because many weather forecasts are bull crap. By the way, it's interesting uh, to talk about the weather in Germany because Germany is very special. Who is German in his, this room? Thank you. Who thinks that the moon, if it's full or not, has an influence on the weather? Please raise your hand. People know that they shouldn't. And that's why they don't raise the hand. But uh, the weird thing is that many people in Germany think that the moon has an influence on the weather. Who is from northern Germany? Who thinks that the river Elbe has an influence on the weather? There are sayings that... You believe that? I want to hear that. <laughs> okay. What's the rule about the weather? Hello, I'm Jörg. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. So, Sometimes after the river, the rain is gone on the other side. <laughs> Sometimes. Can it, can it be it's in about 50% of the cases? Could be. <laughs> okay, then I accept the rule. Who else is believing that the river Elbe does something about the weather? Oh, that's the guy with the cell phone. Okay, back there. This, this is unfortunate that people back there. Definitely. Thanks, Isabel, for your opinion. Very appreciated. So actually about the moon, the moon has no influence on the weather at all, just to tell you that. But now we're talking about the river Elbe and other rivers in the world. Did you raise your hands, ma'am? Yes. Okay, so it's a really big water. 
and big water make, um, I don't know, a navel, and the navel make raining, and so it's raining sometimes. Yeah, people think that, but believe me, it's, it's only a little bit of water that's being shed by, uh, by a river, so there's no influence by rivers whatsoever on the weather. Maybe it's a little bit more humid. I have no freaking idea how I will ever get on that stage again. Maybe back there. <laughs> Maybe back, is it back there? Okay, thanks musicians. Oh, really back there. I try if I can make, I know I'm 58. Ugh. Thank you guys. So, there's a lot that people think they know about the weather, but I can, I want to convince you, no influence from rivers, no influence by the moon, and uh, there's one special thing, non-Germans, tomorrow in the morning, you are going to have a night of heavy partying, heavy drinking tonight. Tomorrow, people are going to have a headache, and the Germans are going to tell you it's about the weather. It's bio -Wetter. They really believe in that. It's complete nonsense. There's only two to three percent of the people feel something, really feel something about the weather into their body. And there's no real thing like bio at all, but they're gonna tell you it's the bio -Wetter. Okay, back to this. The problem is that people think that weather forecast, there's only a small difference between the good ones and the bad ones. Uh, it's not true. It's like in sports, if there were people that said Bayern München is a really, really bad team. It's so much a part between a high quality forecast and a low quality forecast. And there are really low quality forecasts out there. Like this one for the Feldberg, it says 16 degrees, but there were only eight at the time of the forecast. Or other examples, okay, this is the weather channel, so we're technically maybe not allowed to say that. But you see, within 45 minutes, this was for Focus.de here nearby in Munich, they said four different versions, thunder starts at 5.30, thunder starts at 5.30, ends first 7.45, then 7.15, then ending 7.15 again, but starting much earlier, then immediately starting three hours later. So there's a big difference, and people don't understand that. Because the problem is, we don't know. We don't know in the morning if there's gonna be a thunderstorm in the afternoon at a certain place or not. And this has become a big problem with apps because apps pretend that we are able to do so, but we are not. We have no freaking idea in the morning if there's a thunderstorm at your place at three, four, five, or six o'clock. And that's why people notice, oh, it's not right. But the problem is we can never be right because meteorology is not able to predict that if there's a thunderstorm in the afternoon and we don't know that already in the morning. Also, there's a lot of fake in the internet with meteorology. For example, that company, uh, they pretend they have a weather radar all over the world and all over Europe, but they only buy the real radar in the United Kingdom and in Germany. So they just calculate something, they invent something which is not true. As you see at the left, that's what they thought the rain in Switzerland would be with rain also in southern Switzerland because they just derive it from the satellite image. They call it, oh, we do it by a Coke formula. And you see to the right, it has not been right at all. There was no rain in southern Switzerland. And that's one of the reasons as well, people don't believe in weather forecasts anymore. Because they say it's not even right right now. Also weather radar. There's all different qualities of weather radar. That's the same area in Germany. And you see to the left, Wetter 24, you see in the middle by Wetter Online, and you see to the right with the best resolution you can have 250 meters 
by us and you see how accurate you can be for a radar, but it, most companies and most services don't have that. And that's one of the reasons as well, because to the left, basically it somehow rains everywhere and people see, oh no, it doesn't rain at my place. And that's why people don't believe in weather forecasts or observations anymore. So there are two reasons people don't believe in weather forecasts anymore. First, because we meteorologists pretend that we can do something we can't. We pretend that on every app you can see it, we pretend that there is the possibility to have an hourly precise forecast for every place in the world. And this is sometimes true for a day like today. You can't mess up. It's sunny with a few clouds, no problem. But even today, there are apps out there, they would give you a probability of rain uh, of about 5% or so. Then you already know this is not a good app because it should be zero. But also, on the other hand, there's a second thing. We are not as good as we could be because our forecasts are not fine mesh. This is how meteorology works. We have a grid all over the Earth, and for every grid point, we make a forecast. Most of the apps, 95% of the apps you're having is the grid, all the grid points are 28 kilometers about that away. And if you type in your zip code, and uh, most apps uh, allow that, you just get the temperature between the grid points, between the 28 kilometers. So if that grid point to your west has five degrees, and that grid point 28 kilometers away to your east has 15 degrees, it's being calculated 10 degrees. But the problem is, with that grid points that far away, your forecast will never know if you're in a valley or in a mountain because the topography of your area looks no, I can never point at that. I should have known that. So it's the left image. It's just a few stools a part of each other, and you, your forecast never knows if you're in a valley or in a mountain or in a city or so. Because that's why it's so important you have a forecast model which has grid points every kilometer, every single kilometer away, like to the right. It's the same area that's being shown, but you normally have apps which look like the one to the west, which has no idea if you're in a city, in a valley, near a river, or anything like that. Now this makes a big difference. You see, what you get on most apps and forecasts is something like here in, on the left again. No big difference in temperatures, everything looks more or less the same, it's just guesswork. To the other hand, to the right, that's when you have a model every kilometer, the grid points away, it looks very different, it looks like reality. So that's the second part. First part is we pretend that we can do something, but we can't, like knowing in the morning what's the weather going to be at 4 p.m., is it going to be stormy or not. And on the other hand, we don't do what we could do, have a fine mesh model kilometer by kilometer for the entire world. So that's what we are trying to do. Also, different examples here. That's Nevada County in California. You see what you normally get to the left-hand side, just getting uh, warmer to the west, colder to the east to Lake Tahoe and Donner Pass. And the reality is much more different because there are mountains and valleys and everything looks more different from each other. Also in the snow depth, it's not as uncomplicated as it looks to the left. It's more complicated as it looks to the right. Other stuff you can do, and it's gonna help, like tornado tracking. It's also being done in the US. We first now successfully do that for Europe to warn people from tornadoes so they're not surprised by anything that rotates from the sky. Satellite imagery. When you ever have chosen to choose our website, kachelmannwetter.com, you're going to see those for the entire world. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And uh, this is also at the same time now our challenge. I, as uh, the moderator said, I, I ran a 
weather forecasting company in the end that was 130, 140 people large and it was a big company and when you have a big company, you automatically get the bean counters. So I founded that company in 1990 and in 2011 and 12 and so forth, people started to come up, the bean counters said, I, you have to fill a form, what you plan to do, what you're doing or so, and nobody founds a company to fill out forms in the end. So I sold those shares and um, I, I had two choices, just spend the money really slowly in Oklahoma at the Costco because everything is quite inexpensive and just hope I'll die before the money runs out. Or being an old fart, trying to get an entrepreneurship again and start um, a startup, which I have done. And uh, one lesson from the part with the big company, never get big again. Always stay that small that you never have those bean counters in the company that they're gonna tell you in the end what to do and what not and fill out the form or so. Because then you can also become a beamter, a government clerk, because uh, this is as bad as I think. We don't have beamte in Switzerland anymore, because that's why I can say that. So our big challenge is right now, and here comes after the whining part, the short bragging part. I think with our 10 people company, we, we have the best forecast in the world. But our question is now, does anybody care? Will anybody ever notice? Because we are not the Weather Channel. You see what the, the Weather Channel is doing very weird stuff and it's wrong and it's a bad forecast, but it's still the Weather Channels. Who are we? We are nobodies and this is our challenge right now. We have all this stuff now on the website and people slowly start to notice, but it's a very, very slow process. Also lightning detection worldwide, whatever you want to see, thunderstorms worldwide, it's on our website. Okay, we have one first success. Mexico likes it. As you can see, yes. Actually, actually it's not Mexico. And uh, it's only Protección Civil of the Veracruz province. At least they like it. As you can see, Actividad de Descargas Eléctricas de hace unos minutos en el sur the sur-west of the Gulf of Mexico and the coast of the Veracruz. Via Kachelmann Veto. And, um, and they, use, they use our satellite imagery and the lightning detection map. They're the first guys, and this is now our, our big challenge. How can we uh, convince the world without having marketing people, without having salespeople, uh, just spreading out? So uh, that's a question I, I couldn't answer myself yet. Maybe you know the answer. And uh, I'd be interested to know, uh, does quality, if you have uh, a world dominant quality, but you are a tiny, stupid company in Switzerland, will the world notice eventually? And how long does it take? Does the money run out before anybody notices or not? These are the challenges we're gonna make. As I said, we promised ourselves that we're gonna stay small, that we're not gonna be 130, 140 people anymore because that's what I've learned with the old company. The output of the company, the quality of the output has not changed between 20 and 140. So this is something maybe I would um, like you to think always about if it really doesn't really help to get big. In my opinion, for a weather forecasting company, it didn't get big. And I, I had a presentation at a car maker in Germany last week. And when they saw this slide, they said, this is not going to help you in the world. Because people in the world, they expect that they see one place they know and that company in Switzerland, okay, they don't know where Sattel is. Omega, Oklahoma, population 1.5, this is not going to help. Dubbo in New South Wales, this is not going to help. I just want to share that with you. Maybe you just need to have a ladder box somewhere so you know that you have people that somehow know the place 
where you're working from. This is about weather forecast today. The music is starting. Thanks for your time by now. Now, one of the climaxes of the day is following by the people from Uporn coming in. I wish you a pleasant evening and uh, thanks for your time. And always think when you see a weather forecast that's not right, maybe it's not right because it can't be right because we are not in 100 years from now, we are only in 2016. Thanks for your time. Have a great evening. If you have something for me to tell, you saw the email address. And uh, you see, and we're still a little bit unprofessional. That's the good part. Or uh, when you are more than 10 people, meteorologics.com, we have the domain, but don't try it. There's nothing behind there yet, but we're going to change that. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thanks. Let's Take give a hand care. to Bye. Jörg. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Thank I'll see you. you backstage. Okay. Okay.